Hey everyone, thank you for watching Aim for Survival. Today we're going to have a little chat about a bug out situation. Stay tuned. What we have here is a hunter style, mini hunter style fire. And we're gonna make it a hybrid and do it similar to a log cabin style. Crisscrossing are super small materials. Those that are smaller than a pencil or your pinky. And those about the size of your pinky on top. What this allows is oxygen to come through the sides and heat it up. We can add oxygen this way. And that way to make it a self-sustaining fire. Now once it's over a certain level of fuel, we can go ahead and start adding on our larger pieces. So we have a lot of bugs right now. This is an issue you need to contend with. However, now again, this being a hybrid, we'll set it up into a teepee style. So we have the benefits of all three. We have the structure of the log cabin fire. We have the benefits of a self-feeding fire with a teepee. And again, we're not challenged by oxygen flow because we have a wind tunnel here between the front and back logs. Again, that's your hunter style fire. This works really, really good for keeping your profile down. But again, what we're trying to do is deal with bugs. With that said, green material is key. Since this is a pre-devised bug out location, we have wonderful convenience like this. And that's going to go into the topic we're going to discuss. Let's go ahead and say that not only can you use this to clear out bugs and take a smoke bath, smoke being antibacterial, however you can use this to produce a signal. And again, signaling can be a very important topic to discuss. You may want to signal or hide the fact that you're in an area. So again, choose it well. Green materials work very well for producing smoke. And again, taking a smoke bath will help rid you uh, bacteria on your body. It's kind of like a bug spray of sorts. And again, it's real important to keep from being eaten alive by bugs. It's going to make you miserable. It's going to distract you and possibly lead to bloodborne illnesses, diseases, viruses. One never knows. So again, we've got another conversation I really want to talk about and that's having a pre-improvised bug out location. Okay, shelter, guys. Let's talk about shelter. The first thing, the most important thing, and one of the things that's going to expend a majority of your calories. Now, you need it to be low profile. In this case, I have a semi-permanent camp. This one's been up here for years. Not many people know where to find me if I'm here. It is secluded enough to where I don't have to worry about people. I have exit routes and positions where I can go monitor my area and protect myself. However, I've set this up for several people. We can bring the fire and make a fire here in the middle and keep both shelters warm however we have options like our wood stove our cooking station our ring fire and a small charcoal grill any one of these charcoal grills or wood stove can be repositioned in camp to keep us warm in the winter we're gonna have to deal with different situations but again thermal regulation being key to shelter the whole point now that we've done this we can make longer trips we can start using our energy and time to do things that improve our situation. And something worth talking about is we all have our survival kits, guys, or our bug out bags. Now to me, a survival kit is what you need if you don't have a shelter. This is really a hybrid build. I could take this, leave camp, and be pretty well off. However, there's going to be a time limit up to an extent. There's a lot of tools in this kit right here but they will need to be replenished over time. We do have food that we don't need to cook. By having a camp, we have a way to store food, a place to store food, equipment to cook and prepare food to make life a little easier. Having a pre-made shelter is kind of like feeling and coming home. 
when I get to come here, I feel like this is my home away from home. I know I have my tools. I know where to sleep, how to sleep. I know where the water is. I know how to get things done. But will you? Are you grabbing your bag and thinking that bag is the only thing you need? How long can I go through this? Well, it depends on the conditions. Yeah, I can do very well now, but in the winter, it might be a little harder. If I can't get here and have to stay in the field on my trip here en route, I get pinned down, I have to stay out there two weeks, and what should take four days now takes two weeks. Can I do well enough out of this kit? And again, the goal for any backpack is not to live for forever. It is for moving from A to B. That will be the difference between a bug out bag and a refugee bag. If you become a refugee, guys, you're going to have to give up something eventually if you don't give up everything up to and including your life. Guys, so if you have the options, make a plan. Have a route. A to B. B needs to be long term. If you have gear you want at B but you don't want to carry it, just bring it there ahead of time. No big deal. If you don't want to sacrifice it at your house, well then buy extra. Save up your money guys. We will show you ways to save money. Again, I'm going to be training for that travel from A to B with this kit. I've got fun gear included. I had somebody ask me why would I want this cold steel knife on my kit. Why? Because it's fun to train with in good times. Guys, will this stay here forever? I don't know, I doubt it. However, it will double as other tools. It is a chopper, it can be used for small tasks, it can be made into a spear, for, again, for protecting me at a distance. If things do come down to hand-to-hand -hand combat, I'm gonna want distance. If it comes down to a game animal, which is more likely dispatching one, this will be a lot safer than trying to come up and stick them with, like, say, my SE, or in this case, my Condor Swamp Romper. Guys, great tools, great tools, and we're gonna see many new tools so looking here, we do have several options for cooking food. First thing I want to talk about is a regular fire pit. We can surround this one. We have a reflective or heat retaining fire cook system. Again, giving us a nice place to put our food while prepping it. And that's another important concept. You will want to store food that don't need to be cooked. However, we all know it's easy to find stuff that does. And when you leave your house, you're probably going to bring stuff with you if you have access to a vehicle or the means of conveyance. And as you see behind me, we also have a wood stove. It's very useful. We can char material on top. Again, fighting the bugs. We are trying to run them out of camp as it is. We do have limitations on this, as the firewood will need a little more process. No big deal with the right tools. And again, we can control the heat, the burn, the light, litter of this, possibly even direct the smoke into a better location. More importantly, we can put our food on top of here to cook it. Boil water, sanitize our drinking water. So now we've got the bugs trimmed out, guys. And we've talked about a few things. Let's go ahead and get back to our bug out bags. Now what should it do for you? Depending on your skills, it should last you at least three days. I'd say at least a week. Guys, it depends on the location you're going to. I've mentioned it before. Is it a bug out bag or is it a refugee bag? The difference being location. Are you going somewhere that's equipped to maintain your lifestyle or your skill sets? What are your skill sets? Again, the more you know, the less you carry. I prefer my bags around 20 pounds because I'm going to be making distance with them. My camp is closer to my work. However, if I had to get home first to acquire, say, a bug-in situation, which is one of the better situations to go for. I had a comment earlier this week asking whether I would bug in or bug out. Well, to be honest, be realistic you go home go home have your house well supplied there may be some instances where you can't go home however you should always bank on trying to get there first have enough supplies to last you possibly up to a year not everybody can afford to do that but at least keep a month or two of food guys of food that you already eat so if you can already prepare a lot of things that don't require much preparation you're gonna run out of butter oil things in your fridge are gonna spoil but again, we're here talking about bugging out. So after you run out of those supplies, you gotta leave. You gotta go somewhere. Is it gonna be a shelter that requires you to give up your guns? Is it going to be a shelter in which you're gonna get robbed? The bigger your kit, the more you show off what you have, the more likely you are going to be targeted. I myself know if it gets that bad, yes, you're gonna be looking for the guy with the big backpack. He's gonna be slow, easy target, probably a beneficial one. So you don't want your bag to make you a target. You want tools, if you can know how to use those tools, you want quick, easy solutions. You don't want complicated gear. If you need that stuff, have it at your bug out location. I can come up here and escape most people. It'll be hard for people to find me. 
one of the biggest benefits I want to talk about is food acquisition. There is food here. Just on the hike in, we saw turkeys, rabbits. There's all kinds of insects. Yes, you got to do what you got to do. There's a pond we can fish and frog dig in. We have horses. For me, that is a godsend. We know how to defend this land. We have a team to defend this land. It's not an optimal place to try to take over. With that said, mobility will be an issue over time. Even here in the winter, you're going to need stuff. So bartering, being able to get to a bartering position, being able to get there safely and fast enough. Guys, you, you don't want to travel five days for a little bit of food. Now let's talk about where your bug out location needs to be. Again, I rely on wilderness skill sets, guys. I know how to hunt, fish, trap, and track, and I will have the tools up here on site to do it. I'll carry minimal gear. I might not want to walk down Main Street with an AR. Guys, if that's the case, I am going to take a back road. But what's more important is when you get to your location, what do you need? You're going to need shelter. Well, mine's knocked out. You're going to need fire. As you can see, mine is roaring. A pre-med shelter gives me an advantage as I can have stockpiles of firewood already available and I don't have to run around expending calories, energy, or in this case being eaten alive by bugs. I can get here, get comfortable, send up a signal, let my team know I am here or possibly in distress. Again, it goes back to how it works. And again, speaking of a pre-planned position, maybe you don't have shelter already constructed. Maybe you don't want people knowing coming back here you again can tarp up and mask your firewood you can have large bits of lumber already available guys firewood is going to be the large part of your day fire and water is shelter maintaining your shelter again great solutions pre-made options are what you're going to be aiming for now one of my personal recommendations for a bug out camp is a wood stove because it's a very affordable packable stove the benefits are endless however the most important ones to mention are the fact that you can maintain a fire over a long period of time. It's a very efficient way to use your wood, but it also keeps your signaling down. People won't necessarily know you're there if you're using the right woods. Use rotten woods, it'll put out just as much smoke as green material, but with seasoned wood, and again, prepping your side ahead of time, letting the wood season, using that seasoned wood puts off very little smoke. We have a radiant heat source that is protected from rain and downpours. You can pour a bucket of water on this. We tested it earlier and it will not put the inside coals out. Again, the coals being useful, you can make yourself some char cloth using this as well. Okay, next, we had in the same comment I mentioned earlier, we were talking about tools. Guys, maintaining your tools is important. Up here, we have several crates of supplies. We have our food hidden off-site for many, many reasons. First off, food ultimately will draw bugs, insects, and critters into camp. And when I say critters, I'm talking about big critters scavengers, things you don't want in camp. Now, things like my axe are gonna get a workout. Things like my saws. I definitely recommend your Lansky puck, a rasp or a metal file, you know what I'm talking about. Use any of the sharpening systems like your Lansky multi-edge sharpener, possibly the box sharpening kit. Have that diamond hone, guys. Sometimes you can just hone and never have to sharpen. Sharpening removes mass materials. Honing and stropping maintains uh, the material that is there. And again, a sharp edge is a good edge. A dull edge will cause you to work harder and slide off more violently, again, exposing you to danger. Well guys, I appreciate you watching. I know this got a little long, but again, it's very important to know the difference between a bug out bag and a refugee bag. Knowing that the A to B is the important part. Stay at home, bug in at A. Have a plan in case that don't work. Most scenarios, however, dictate what strategy you need to use. Natural phenomenon, things like floods and tornadoes may destroy, hey, it may destroy your house, your bug in location. Have a secondary one, have a neighbor or something somewhere a mile off that you can get to rather quickly and communicate barter with, guys. And then have that all breaks loose option. For me, it's a wilderness camp. For you, it may be a Red Cross shelter, but know where they are. Sometimes, especially in my county, they open up certain schools to be a shelter, a relief shelter. Know which shelters those are. Know which places they are. Maybe it's a church. Maybe it's a school. Maybe it's a public building. There's a lot of information you want to know. Look it up in the news. Take advantage of all the information that's out there now, including my channel. Check out the past videos. Without it getting too much longer, guys, I appreciate everything you do for us. Use the links in the descriptions. Find the gear you've seen and likewise gears that I recommend. 
Now, if you haven't already, smash that like button, comment down below, subscribe, and as always, when you aim for survival, don't miss.